That's right, there is a new Digimon game. Sure, it may not actually be made by Bandai. They haven't told us anything about the next game in years. Digimon Survive released on July 28th, 2022. It's the last official game, outside of the re-release of Digimon World Next Order in 2023, which practically had no changes to it, so that barely really counts. But Digimon Digital Tamers 2 is a game created by Dragon Rod Art, someone who I first found on X for the huge amount of sprite work they've done for so many different Digimon. So I had to go check this game out that they just put out last week. It is incredibly easy to find. Just look in the description below for a link and simply run the .exe file on PC. And if you want to play this on Android, you can on mobile. Just download and install the .apk file instead there. This game is free to download, but of course, through the link, you may also decide to tip the creator of the game. For there is clearly hundreds and thousands, possibly of hours of work put into this project. And once you are in, it will start you immediately on the tutorial, so you have at least a decent idea of what you are doing. So, let us look a bit into what Digimon Digital Tamers 2 has to offer. Now the very first thing it will take you into and tar start talking to you about is the training menu. This will be the very first place that you go into, it will be the habitat where your Digimon lives, and you get to see a very cute little sprite walking around. And there are so many different sprites that it is impressive the amount of detail and personality that they can give to some of these for so many. For especially such a small team of pretty much just one person working on a lot of the sprite work. And you will be able to feed your Digimon here. This is one of these kinds of games where it is a very much a raising type game. It's much more the Digimon world style of game. Though so there is plenty of different mechanics in this game to mix it up from being purely just that, as you will see as we move on. So here you'll be able to feed your Digimon, clean up their poop when they eventually have to do that, uh, pet them, throw a ball around in order to interact with them, and general things that will help you improve your friendship with your Digimon. Now the main thing you can also do here is actually do training in order to improve your stats. The way that they handle training in this game is you cannot train over and over again unless you use an item that allows you to regain the resource that's limiting you from doing so, which is your energy. Energy slowly regenerates on its own, so long as you're not doing anything, and in, when it is full, you may train. There are six different stats for you to train. HP, Attack and Defense, Special Attack and Special Defense, pretty self-explanatory. For the six stat, Spirit's a little different. It stops you from being stunned if you were to be stunned in battle. I still have yet to come across this in four hours of gameplay, but knowing most of these games, the later you go in the game, the more status ailments and such things like that will become far more common. Now, of course, they start you with a Digi Egg or a Digi Tama at first, so evolving that Digimon or Digivolving is very important. So, you will have to go into the Digivolution menu. Now, the important thing to know about the Digivolution menu is you will be able to Digivolve your Digimon here. I was able to go from Baby and Training Rookie because that's just the tutorial. But the thing was, in my four hours, I was never able to get my Dracomon past Champion. Because the way it works, unless you dive deep into the Tamer skills, which we'll dive a little more into later, you don't know your Digivolution requirements, and the only ones that will be revealed to you are ones that you have already qualified for. So for the longest time, sitting there for me, I had six options of champions, but none of them would tell me anything of what I needed in order to gain them. So it is very limited unless you are willing to just go look it up. The, there are places and websites that you can just go to and it will tell you already what you need in order to digivolve into these other forms. But it is something to know that the game itself is very limited and will not tell you. Even though at the beginning of the game it asked, do you like surprises or do you want to know information? And I said, I don't like surprises. I kind of want things delivered up front. And I figured that would be something that would change there. It did not make any difference there. But once you're done with all that, you will finally be allowed to go into the world map. Here you'll be able to make a selection of where to go. Currently there are only two options I've unlocked, but there is apparently a third that will be coming, and it will allow you to go to explore different maps of the digital world, starting here in the Village of Beginnings, or the Primary Village if you wish to call it that. But they call it the Village of Beginnings here, and you will find a lot of rather young Digimon to attack here. And this will introduce you into the battle system. Now up to this point, this game may very well have reminded you of games like Digimon Championship. For the few of you who have played that game, I don't think that was one that's very well known. The battle system, however, is very different. 
you could say it's a little bit like a Digimon World kind of battle system because if you don't do any input, your Digimon still will attack and fight and be able to either win or lose a fight on their own. But there are many things that you can do. There are five buttons available to you. There is defense, which allows you to put up a defense and take no damage if you are blocking when an attack would hit you. It has a stamina bar effectively on it, so you cannot just sit there and block forever. You have a basic attack, which you can tell your Digimon to do an additional basic attack on top of what it would normally do. You have a special attack button, which means it'll activate its special attack. And you have a jump, which is another way of dodging out of the way of some enemy attacks. And when you hit your opponent, orbs will come off of them. You do not have to click them or collect them, but like Digimon Battle Spirit, these will fuel your gauge. And in Battle Spirit, it would allow you to Digivolve. Here, it just allows you to use a special technique, which does a lot of damage. As any of you who have played the Digimon World games know, when you fill up those meters, those special attacks do quite a bit of damage. And your opponent can also fill up that bar and do the same to you. Items can drop during battle, so you can get battles during items during battle and items after battle. So there are a lot of different ways to do it. It is an elegant way to handle a combat system that's automatic but gives you some things that you can do so that it's more direct than the Digimon World style of games usually are with their combat system. It's almost more of an action system because your Digimon will do things when you tell them to. Supposedly as you build up friendship they'll do it even faster. Even with the one or two hearts of friendship that I've had out of five, it seems so fast that I don't really know how it could be much faster. So all in all, in general, I like the combat system. It's very, it's very quick and elegant. It's just like many battle systems when you're sitting there and doing hundreds of battles, it can start to, it can start to wear on you over and over and over again. So when you complete these battles, you will typically gain bits and any items that are dropped. But there are three different types of experience that you can gain. For those of you who have played Digimon World Next Order, you'll be familiar with Tamer Points, or many other Digimon World games of that style have had similar mechanics to that too, like Redigitize also had this for Tamer Rank. Your Digimon gains experience towards leveling up, which will improve all of its stats. But then, if you fight a Digimon that is of any type, which pretty much means is rookie or higher level, you will also gain a certain amount of specific experience to that type of Digimon. Which, for those of you who have played Digimon World DS games, DS or Dawn and Dusk, you are familiar with this mechanic. And you can start to see, this game is an homage to many different Digimon games. It mixes a lot of different mechanics from many different Digimon games in the past. And this Tamer experience allows you to level up your Tamer and give you Tamer skills. These Tamer skills allow you to upgrade your Tamer. These are skills that aren't exactly tied to your specific Digimon, so even if for some reason you change Digimon, these will always stick through. Again, Digimon World Next Order had a very similar system. And you can go through and you can see what all of the Tamer skills do right away. Many of them are small benefits that slowly add up over time that will help out you in your method of going through. I know pretty much everyone at this point has recommended that you go for the one that reveals Digimon Digivolution requirements right away, because for me I've already seen that it's very difficult to do otherwise. Or, uh, I mean, my main idea when I first saw them was get more items, get more money, then you can handle many other things. So, when you are wandering around in the world, you may also find some NPCs that are around. If you find the very first one, he will go to Log In Village, as they call it here. It's not Flodia or File City, it's Log In Village. And it works like Digi any of the Digimon World style, one style games, where you can recruit Digimon who will return there. Many of which, in order to do so, they have quests to get you to, to get them to finish their problems and be able to return to you. Some of these are fetch quests of collecting certain items, some of them you have to defeat certain monsters, and I'm sure there will be many more to come. There are supposedly at least 50 unique quests already in the game that allow you to recruit Digimon, or they may allow you to do other things as well on top of that. Plus, very early on, you will talk to Commandamon, and you'll be able to start to unlock other areas. In order to do so, they are gatekept by a boss that is standing in front of a trolley that connects to the other area. You must defeat these bosses in order to get to the other areas. 
Some of these, depending on what Digimon you have, may prove much more difficult than others. And that is your general gameplay loop. Eventually you will unlock challenge mode, which means there are over 120 apparent battles in there, with all of them having very different requirements for some of these battles, meaning you may have to raise many more Digimon in order to obtain them. Speaking of which, the way in which you obtain Digimon in this game is a little different than some other games, where some games you have scan data sometimes, or you recruit them by shooting skateboards into their faces in Digimon World 2. Here you beat up a Digimon and it has a chance to drop its data for you. You only need it to drop it once and then you will be able to unlock that Digimon in your storage. By the end of my first few hours here, I had many different Digimon that I could pick from. In fact, my Dracomon was having such a hard time gaining all of the requirements it needed to Digivolve, I decided to just pick up the Sunflomon that it gave me as my first champion data and just raise that. Or I could have gone with the Kyubimon I got shortly after. Instead of doing these wonky evolution effects, I just decided to swap out Digimon, and it was that easy. Sure, it means I was a little behind on the training that I had done for my Dracomon, but all in all, the champions are so much stronger than rookies. Which you will have to keep in mind if you're looking at enemies. You will have to bear in mind many things when deciding whether to fight an enemy Digimon. And this is one of the things that worries me about the game already early on is very often in Digimon there's the virus data and vaccine triangle. You know, virus is good against data, data is good against vaccine, vaccine is good against virus. You, we, we all know this. But there is a fourth and fifth one, the fourth one being where you have no attribute, which is pretty much always just babies and uh, babies and in training in this game. And they are weak to all attributes. Or there's the unknown attribute, which is typically reserved from what I've seen so far for the Digimon that are usually considered free types. And they are strong against everything, making them incredibly powerful. So it may very well be a good idea to just train an unknown so you're just strong against everything. Plus there are the elements. Now I don't know the exact elementary this game uses just yet. I haven't played it enough to figure out exactly what way they do it. But the biggest thing about these attributes is it feels like Cyber Sleuth, where these things are possibly double or quadruple if you are both, have both the wrong attribute and element going into some things, and sometimes just battles that seem like they shouldn't be no problem will absolutely destroy you because you're going against the wrong attribute. And now I wouldn't have necessarily a problem with that if it wasn't such a very difficult in order to change your partner. Sure, I said it was easy, you can change your partner all the time, yeah, you just load it up. But then it's so much work to bring them back up, because when you do switch over to a new Digimon, they're at whatever level you fought them at, which is usually lower level than whatever Digimon you use to fight them. So, that is one of my concerns right now, early on, it's just the amount of grind and time that it takes. I've seen around and did a little bit of the challenge battles, that may very well be a great way in order to just grind up and train, which do cost you some bits, but may very well be worth it in order to do so. Now a couple of mechanics that are pretty unique to this game that I want to bring up before I wrap this up is a couple of things. At the very beginning, it asks you if you want to turn on the rebirth mechanic or not. So the mechanic that is very common to the Digimon World games, where your Digimon will eventually grow very old and die, and then be reborn with increased stats and you raise again. You can turn this off. Which is interesting because some of the Tamer skills would then be absolutely useless if you turn that off. But it also means that your Digimon will just forever continue to stick around. And for me, even though on stream I decided to turn on, it felt right for on stream, I feel like normally I would leave this off because you can just, if you need to be, get stronger, there's training. You can pretty much just keep training and training and training. Apparently there are some limits based on what your current stage is, but you can just keep training if you need to get stronger and if your Digimon never dies. But then again, in my four hours of playing, I think only about three or four in-game days passed and a Digimon will live for 50 days. So it seems like this game is almost meant for mobile and meant to take a long time just to chill and do stuff in. That seems to be one of the primary functions of it. But 
there are a couple of things already that have come up that I am quite interested in seeing that will help with some of that. Because there are these orbs that I found for the longest time, I just picked up a whole bunch of them and couldn't figure out what they do. But when looking at them, and if you look at them in the training menu, they will double, triple, quadruple, quintuple, or sextuple your training results. Meaning that you can train up a Digimon far easier if you've gotten a bunch of these items. Plus, there's also other items that can drop from Digimon that you can use to multiply the experience they currently have of a certain type by 25. So that is a not plus 25, multiplied by 25. So that is a huge gain that they can possibly have through it. So there are some ways that hopefully as I go through and learn even more items and things, there might be ways to help speed things up and help the game feel like it respects your time a little more, which is one of my current concerns early on. Don't get me wrong, this is an amazing product for one person to do. I hope that this has been helpful in informing you what the game is and what you might be getting into. And if you are interested in learning more about Digimon games and knowledge, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notifications so you don't miss any more Digimon news coming out from me. So yes, all in all, it has, it is interesting. It has a lot of myriad of mechanics thrown together, and I'm interested to see more. My polls suggest that people, other people weren't as interested in this game want to see me run some more Cyber Sleuth, so I may have to decide whether I'm running that or a mixture of this game in between. We will have to see. You let me know down in the comments below what you want to see, what questions you have, what are your experiences with this game, are you enjoying it? Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until the next one, take care everyone. Bye bye.